welcome. On this Father's Day weekend, we are remembering and honoring the gifts our fathers gave us. I hope you had a good father, and no, I'm sure you didn't have a perfect one, except for our Father in Heaven. So I invite you to celebrate the gifts of whoever was a father to you, whether it was biological, adoptive, foster, or another man in your life. Let's open with prayer. Almighty God, you have set us as individuals and families. May our families be strengthened by your spirit. Keep us close together so that no challenge can unravel the bindings of love that unite us. On this Father's Day, we pray that you will turn our hearts in tenderness toward one another. In the name of him who came into the little family of Nazareth. Amen. Now, let us join in singing. Friend of God.
you pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. So I was inspired by Mike Huddleston's Mother's Day sermon, um, in which he talked about the gifts his mother gave him. And I didn't think we should forget about the gifts our fathers gave us. So let's start with a word from the scriptures. This is Matthew chapter 7 verses 9 through 11. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Now, Jesus is using a teaching technique here that the author of our recent study on the Sermon on the Mount described as going from the lesser to the greater. In other words, if you who are evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more of your Father in Heaven? I bet you've seen this technique before. Check out this commercial, one of the most successful ever made. Look at this stuff. Some cereal is supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. So the message here is if Mikey, the ultimate picky eater, likes it, your child will too. So if we, imperfect humans, know how to care and provide for our children, how much more does God our Father? Now, Unfortunately, there are some fathers who don't know how to care or provide for their children. They may be neglectful or physically abusive. They may be emotionally or sexually abusive. They may be absent from the child's life altogether. I know that some who are listening to this have fathers just like that I described. Now, I even thought of several examples of less than perfect fathers as I was working on this, but I decided I'm not going into detail about how terrible some fathers are because those are not the gifts that our Heavenly Father gives us through our earthly parents. And if your father is one of those, I pray that you can think of another man who acted as a father in your life, another relative or a neighbor, a teacher or a pastor, a scout leader or a youth director. Think of the gifts those surrogate fathers gave you. You know, study after study shows that having a father figure in a child's life plays an important and positive role in their future. These men promote risk-taking and problem-solving. They develop dis help children develop decision-making abilities. And most importantly, they provide a role model for being in relationships. The research notes how important it is for fathers to be engaged early, taking on caregiving roles, helping physically care for their children. This is very different from how fathers acted in previous generations. My dad was one who didn't interact a lot with young children. I don't know if he ever actually changed a diaper, though I am told he would drive me around at 2 a.m. when I was colicky. I just got to spend a week with three fathers my brother-in-law and his two sons-in-law, and some young children ranging from seven years of age to 16 months. Those men were all hands-on in caring for the children. They changed the little one and held her when she cried inconsolably. They played with the three boys, watched movies with them, comforted them. They gave those children gifts that will live with them for all their lives, especially about how real men love and care for the children in their lives. I asked folks to share gifts that their fathers had given them, and I noted that they could be literal physical gifts or emotional or spiritual gifts. 
I'm going to start with a gift my father gave me in my 20s. Now, my father didn't think that girls were interested or able to do certain physical things like, I don't know, use a screwdriver or a hammer. I grew up being a tool holder and a light shiner. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a flashlight. I would have it with my dad, and he would say, move the light over here, little hun. I got really good at holding the flashlight where daddy could see, or being able to hand him the Phillips head screwdriver as opposed to the flathead. But the day came when I needed to be able to do some of these things on my own, specifically when I bought a house. So I asked for a toolbox for my birthday, and this is the one he gave me. And it was equipped with tools, good ones, like craftsmen, ones that have lasted for 30 years. You know, on that day, I changed in my father's eyes and in my eyes. I was no longer just a helper, someone to hand him a tool. I was a fellow tool user. I was able to solve problems on my own using the tools he had given me, literally and metaphorically. I had to do that recently with the gate that opens into the park in the backyard of the parsonage. The wood had gotten stripped and the screws wouldn't fit in anymore and, and the gate was just going to come open. It wouldn't lock. So I went and researched online what to do. I got the right things and I screwed that screw back in and it held. I felt real pride in tackling a problem, finding a solution, and being able to execute it. That was a gift from my father. What are some of the uh, gifts that your fathers gave you? Here are some of the ones that you shared with me. One is from my sister, and my dad's gift to her was resiliency. She remembers a time when she was struggling in school and he helped her discover her resiliency to know what is important in life and what is not. Generosity is one of the gifts that Steve Gong's father gave him. He writes, he felt blessed. He was, good, he was blessed with a good life and he tried to remind us kids to give back to the community in which we lived. He would say that the people of Tulare were very good to us all the years we had been in Tulare. Remember the gifts others gave you and respond in generosity. Pay it forward. Steve continues to live that out in this church and in this community. I know that it is a gift which he has passed on to his children. Man Maxfield says her father gave her the gift of artistic expression, song, learning, athletic exercise, and exuberance for life. We can all see how that gift has become part of her life and how she has shared it with others, especially that gift of song with us. Beth Cox's dad taught her love of family, which I have seen her live out in her life with her family. He also gave her the gifts of kindness and hard work. Do you ever think of hard work as being a gift? It is. Marjorie described her father as a real gentle man, one who modeled how a husband loves and cares for his wife. She said her father did things to make her mother's life easier. Ben, who is husband to one of my sister's stepdaughters, talked about how his father was a born teacher. <laughs> the man has a degree in philosophy and now is an attorney. And Ben says he was always teaching him something. Now the two work together in their law practice, and he is still teaching his son. He's also taught Ben what fathers do, because Ben has become a teacher to his children. I mentioned that dads help their children be risk takers. I saw that in my brother-in-law. When my nieces were about 18 months old, I was with him and them in, in one of the bedrooms of their house. And the girls were jumping on the bed, and so we told them to stop. What you do with kids? And they responded by jumping off the bed, right into my brother-in-law's arms. He was there to catch them. In fact, that then became the game. The girls would jump into his arms, he'd set them down, and they 
raced around to get back on the bed and launched themselves back into his arms. In fact, they started going so fast that Rob had a hard time keeping up, and, and one was jumping as he was setting the other one down, but no one ever got hurt. He never missed. He kept catching those girls until they were exhausted. Not all gifts are positive. And some of the answers to my email question reflected that. My father wasn't perfect by any stretch. He was born in 1925 and grew up in the South in the era of discrimination. When my sister and I were in high school, he told us flat out that if any of us ever went out with a boy who was not white, he would teach us a lesson, if you know what I mean. And yet my sister's first husband was Hispanic. Daddy loved Victor. At one point I reminded him of his words when we were younger and he was silent for a moment. Then he said, that goes to show you, your father can be wrong. I loved him for that. In those words, he taught me that we can grow and change over time. In fact, he showed how grace can change us and that the giving continues even after we're all grown up. And that brings us back to Jesus' words. If we who are imperfect and regularly fall short of the kingdom of God know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more so our Father in heaven? All the gifts from our fathers that we have shared are possible because God gave first. We can even recognize the negative because of the gifts we see from God. I could go back through the list of gifts above and show how God is the source, but all of those gifts come back to the first gift, the best gift that God gives. <coughs> that is the gift of grace. Each of the gifts of our fathers is a manifestation of the grace of God. I'm reading a book called The Grace of God by renowned preacher Andy Stanley. And it's fascinating to read as he traces God grace, God's grace from the opening words of Genesis. But one thing he wrote really struck me. He said, it is only within the mystery and complexity of relationships that grace is experienced. There are few relationships more complex than that between parent and child. And the grace is present. Something we often don't appreciate until we are parents ourselves or until our parent is no longer there to share his gifts with us. As we remember our fathers this weekend, those who raised us and those who came into our lives in other ways, I invite you to see how the gifts they brought are reflections of the good gifts of God. Take some time to talk to each other about the gifts that your father gave you and the gifts you want to pass on to your children and grandchildren. I did that on this vacation with my family after all the little ones were in bed and, and while all the adults relaxed in the pool and the hot tub. It was a blessing what was shared. It was a gift of grace. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Holy God, from you we learn what a father is meant to be, strong, loving, and wise. For your sake we honor those men who helped give us life and all the other men whose love and strength have helped us grow. Thank you for the men who cuddled and played with us and so helped us learn what your joyous love is like. Thank you for the trustworthy men who taught us about your faithfulness. Thank you for the men who challenged us to make something of ourselves, men who wouldn't let us stop with crawling when they knew we could run. Thank you for the men who taught us to play fair and the men who encouraged us to give our very best. Thank you for the men who worked hard and sacrificed much 
so that we could have it better than they did. Thank you for the men who showed us that gentleness is the proof of real strength. Loving God, we pray for those men who are fathers of growing children. Give them more energy than their smaller ones and wisdom enough to guide their older ones. Give them patience in conflict, sensitivity in matters of the heart, and sound judgment in preparing their children for the future. Help fathers balance the enormous demands made on them, helping them do a good job, both at work and at home. Be with those fathers who must live apart from their children, as well as those who must raise their children alone. Enable each to foster lasting, life-giving relationships with their children. And together we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we celebrate the gifts that we can bring to God, let us pray. Holy God, we remember today the gifts of our fathers and, and the gifts that come from you, our Heavenly Father. This is your world and we are your children. And it is with joy that we bring to you gifts, returning just a little bit of what you have given us so that others may know the joy of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where will we go and who will we be? We go out into the world to be God's people. And the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will keep us and bestow upon us the gift of grace that we may share it with others. Amen.